All right. Hello, everybody. If you ask me, stone carving is the dustiest. Stone power carving is the dustiest carving there is out there. Okay. There's so many different ways to do it. You can have yourself a drip system up here. Okay. And the water drips down. It drips on your carving. So because you don't want to heat up your diamond tips. But before I get too carried away, I got a Dremel 4000 here with a Dremel flex shaft. Okay. I got these diamond burrs on um, Amazon a couple months ago. I think these are 60 grit so or 80 grit. <sighs> There's so many different things you can talk about with stone carving. You know, it's like wood. There's different types of stone. Some of it's harder. Some of it's softer. Some of it holds better detail. This is some, uh, uh, what, uh, not soapstone, but um, freak, what's the freaking name of it? Something, something stone on uh i found on the beach let me think of it sorry this is limestone i found on the beach yesterday i've never carved it yet it doesn't have too much character to it this is also limestone i found on the beach yesterday and like i said there's not really a lot of character to it this is a stone i found on the beach a couple weeks ago it has lots of nice colors in it but there's cracks in it so you know it I'm, I would spend a long time carving this stone and it's just not worth it because it has cracks in it. It has deficiencies in the rock like that right there. So I won't carve that. So the limestone, I don't think I'm going to carve it. I'm going to find some better stuff that has some character in it. I don't know if this stuff will ever get character in it, but I'm not going to carve this today too. This is soapstone from BC here. I got up in um, uh, Boston Bar a few years ago. This is the softest stone to carve for sure. This stuff carves like butter. You can use your cuts all bur burrs when you carve this stone. Now, this piece. Can anybody guess what this stone is? Can you guess what this is? This is petrified wood. Look, it looks like there's a little two eyebrows there with an the open mouth like a little ghost. The ghost of the petrified wood. So this is petrified wood. So this is super, super old wood that petrified over the thousands of years. And it feels like this stone is the hardest stone there is. I'm going to put my camera in the overhead. And I, well, I don't know if I need to. So all you, when you go to the beach or wherever, all you do to test, yeah, I'm going to put the camera in the overhead. So get yourself a screwdriver or a little pocket knife. And all you really need to do is take a screwdriver, or like I said, a little pocket knife, and scrape the stone see if it scrapes if it scrapes it's it's softer stone see like you see that it scrapes so your diamond burrs will be able to carve that fairly easy same with the soapstone watch this look at that scrape mark so i know this is super soft stone look at even dents when i do that but i have carved pebbles like rocks that i found on the beach and it seems like when you carve the beach rocks or any kind of rocks well just outdoor rocks that you find there's a super thin layer on the outside of the rock that's just getting weathered that's softer. And once you get past that, that's when you get into the hard rock. So, okay. So this one, this one doesn't even scrape. No, this one's the hardest rock out of all these rocks, for sure. Did I try this one? This one, really, you don't really get scrape marks on it too, but I think this petrified wood would be the hardest out of all of them but this one has the most character with different colors so i think we're going to carve this one today and this is a shout out to beth the builder i seen she actually just got some burrs like these ones and she's using these and she's figuring stuff out so good for you beth and um she's got the youtube channel everybody i've given her a few shout outs she gives me shout outs and um she loves just carving stones so you know she carves these cute little owls and stuff so this isn't going to be a big carving today. I don't know what I'm going to do in this. I just might carve some lines in it just to bring the grain out. Who knows? I don't have anything planned. I can carve the silhouette of a face or anything. So when you're doing this kind of carving, you can have a drip system where the water drips when you've got your little bit there and pretend this is your bit right here and the water drips on it so it doesn't, because you can overheat these diamond burrs. These are just cheap and then the whole casings can fly off them or you just melt them. Or you can have a thing of water around like this to, to dip your diamond burr. You can get put some put your hand in the water like this. You can put some water on the carving just to make it keep it cool. So this is messy. So I'm going to be using my dust collector too. 
where all the dust gets sucked down here. I have two dust collectors. I got a new one. My old dust collector, the bearings are already gone in it and squeaky because I've already carved lots of stone with that. So, you know, I suggest if you carve the stone, don't use your good dust collector because you can screw up the bearings if you're going to use a suction system like this. So I'm going to use my old one because it's already wrecked. And yourself a dust mask, 100% a dust mask because you do not want to get this stone in your lungs. Now what I'm going to carve on here. So lots of this might be a voiceover video. It's not going to be too long. Um, what I'm going to do is, you can see I got the diamond burr on here. Okay. I run full speed. I'm going to touch each stone so you can see how, like this soapstone, limestone, um, something stone, and then the petrified wood. So I'm just going to turn my fan on and give them a quick hit so you can see how much softer they carve. So soapstone. Okay. Here is the limestone. Okay, so I dipped it in the water. So you can see it does carve somewhat soft, not as soft as a soapstone, but um, there's no character in this. So like different colors in this stone, so I'm not gonna carve this. Now here's this other stone. I'm gonna dip it in water first a bit, okay? So get it a bit wet. Okay, so there's that stone, super hard, nothing, um, it's not worth carving it because the cracks in it and it will be just be deficiencies. Now let's get this um, petrified wood. Okay, so this is definitely the hardest stone to carve, but I'm going to let this dry off a bit, have a sip of my coffee, and decide what I want to carve on this. And like I said, most, most of it's going to be a voiceover. So I'll say before I really get carving, this is going to be a time lapse. I can't find my um, box with all my burr sets in it, and my diamond burr sets in it, and stuff like that. So this is the biggest burr that I got here. So I'm going to do with this... Or, um, let's see here, what else do I got? The biggest burrs in these sets is what I'll use. Like, um, I'm going to use this on the side so it can remove lots of, because you want to do bulk removal, right? So, this isn't going to be a very detailed carving. I don't want to carve this too long. I just kind of want to show you guys, and maybe we can get some colors of the wood grain to pop out. But um, it's just going to be the silhouette of a face kind of in the rock. And this will be around for a hundred years, a couple, like a thousand years after the stone carvings. They'll never rot or something. I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to listen to some music. I'll do a voiceover, kind of talk, say hi to everybody, and just kind of start chiseling away at this face. It's not going to be a wood spirit. It's just going to be a kind of a face. You know, this super hard stone carving is not really my kind of thing. So when I started this video, I was kind of thinking like, um, oh boy, Jordy, what you get yourself into? Um, I sped up the video so fast. I did have a damp cloth that I also put on the carving to make it damp too. I just don't like the water everywhere with these burrs because I spin them so I, I carve full speed. And when you use the water... <clears throat> It makes like a mud and it splats, splats everywhere. It's because I'm just, I'm so careless when I'm carving, right? And I'm just, I just want to get it done. 
So carving stone is really not the best thing for me because well you have to have well you have to have patience and again you have to have patience it's a hard stone like this and you just really got to let the burrs do the work but i really suggest you using the water system even though i don't like it so these burrs have been holding on pretty good i must say because i'm not really a water rock carver i'm more of a dry carver um water when i carve with water it gets muddy it, that's why i got this thing on the back because it gets muddy it splats everywhere and it just can create a real mess but using water is best for you know having dust fly around and it is best for these burrs so i suggest probably if you're going to do rock carving use water um this is about me two hours carving heavily edit like not pushing as hard but just you guys i showed you just quickly scraping the wood the only thing exciting about carving this for me is you can see the wood grain in there see the wood grain so i don't know what i said earlier about a thousand years old but this piece of wood is probably well it's first growth humans probably weren't even alive when this tree was alive you know even a dinosaur could have you know been eating berries from a tree shit out the berries and that's how this tree grew so i could call this piece of petrified wood dinosaur poop wood or whatever you want to call it but this is like kind of dinosaur age stuff but you look at this cheek hair you can see the wood grain right there let's do a slow look at it here you can see look at that underneath the nose oh that took lots of time to carve in there once again it's got a thick wide carving fusion nose at the bottom <clears throat> and uh well it's going to be like a little chinaman this is just going to be a happy little guy with a si i might um go to kevin's um video sticks and stones videos tonight and watch because uh, he has a few few new videos out how to carve lips but you know you could just carve this guy kind of a nice happy face and um i don't know oh another thing i wanted to do too now is get an old toothbrush take this in the bathtub and wash all the the old like goopy freaking dust off it yep carry on you guys want to talk about wood grain look at that wood grain dinosaur age stuff right there so i think i'm gonna finish i'm not gonna carve anymore today it's getting late in the day <clears throat> i slept excuse me i slept in today and uh well i guess i'll just probably finish this off tomorrow it's not gonna have much like it's this is more of an artistic piece you know <clears throat> i'm gonna look at it tonight and decide what i want to do i think i'll leave that the way it is like i said from the beginning of the video it's just going to be the block out of a face um you know you can do different things you can i can cut it here i can leave some of this looking just like stone and then i could like well whatever petrified old petrified wood that i can cut here and do some weird things and stuff stuff it's all your decision what you want to do but when i i do a piece like this i think it's kind of more like and you will look at that there is an old dino oh no maybe somebody drilled that no no that's an old bug hole yep a dinosaur bug I wonder if I cut that out, if I could find a little dead uh, bug in there, like a worm in there that's been petrified too. But anyways, I'm sure some of you guys in the States can get this. This I've carved petrified wood before, but nowhere near this. The last stuff that I carved smelled like mold when I carved it. This stuff just smells like rock. This is probably the hardest stone that I've carved yet. You can see it's already starting to dry there anyways i'll be back tomorrow so it's now the next day and i think i probably truthfully spent about two and a half hours carving this this stone i don't care what anybody says might be just as hard as jade i've carved a little bit of jade not too much but um I ain't no friggin' stone carver. Well, I guess I am because I've carved this. So, 
like I said, it's the next day now I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I got the friggin' thing thing to carve. I don't want to friggin' carve it. But when I was kind of through carving this yesterday, I want to show you, maybe this can inspire some somebody else too. I got some soapstone and I carved this guy. I carved this one, this wood spirit, in about 20 minutes. I'm not lying. Soapstone is so soft. And, well, it's just way better than carving this. You know, I don't carve, like, I'm not thinking I'm carving to sell sell the carvings or make money. I carve because I like it. So I was struggling with this. So I said, screw it. I just put this one down. I kind of finished filming for this yesterday. And I had this piece of soapstone upstairs already, so I carved it. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys the beautiful color in the soapstone. I think my buddy Stu gave me this piece of uh, this thing thing. And actually, Stu helped me get this soapstone too. But you're going to see the color difference in the soapstone at the end of this video when I give it a clear coat. Also, so I'm not going to carve any more. I don't care. This video is my video. I can make it about what I want. But this is a stone carving video. So later on, I'll just give him a little happy face in there, a little lip thing, and call that done. I might do a little bit more carving, but it's take, I don't want to put too much more time into it. It's, I'm just not interested in it. And you guys don't have to be interested in things that you're carving too. But I don't like having lots of unfinished carvings around, so I will finish this. This looks like an Asian, like a Buddha. And this looks like one of those Buddha big ears. You know, if I, if I wanted to push that ear back... You know, they ha the Buddhas have the big, huge ears. But do you think, you know how, so you see that there? It's about a quarter inch off, the, like we're talking about the side of the face where the ear would be. That would take me about two hours to carve that down a quarter inch past the face. That's how hard this stone is. And those diamond burrs are aggressive. So I'm, I'm not going to film anymore with this. Now this piece. It, yes, it's just a simple wood spirit. Boom, boom, boom. I blocked it out. And I, you know, I said like stone, it should be more artsy stuff and blocky. So I just kind of did this in here and this and that and this. Just not to try and curve a wood spirit, but something that you can see where it is, what it is. So now up here, up here, what do I see? I see an eagle head coming off here. So that's what I'm going to carve. I'm going to carve an eagle head on the top. And it's not going to be a realistic looking eagle head. What's the character? Caricature? Like the little figurine, little figures just carve Rob does. It's going to be the silhouette of an eagle head. You know, I can make it kind of look like, um, you know, his head's here. And it's kind of his wing coming off here. I cut too deep in here. I could cut deeper and make this all feathers and stuff too. But I'm not interested. You know, I don't know what I don't know what the eagle head's gonna do off the side here either. I don't care. I just don't care. I'm kind of done with it. Just get it done. Carry on. But what I am gonna show you guys quickly. Here's a Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr. Okay. I'm gonna show you how how soft this soapstone stuff really is, and how the Cutsall burrs just rip through it. Oh yes, and it cleans your burrs too. <laughs> so that's going to be it for this one. Um, yeah, I don't know. This was the hardest stone I've ever called. Well, because from the dinosaur, dinosaur ages. All stones probably from the dinosaur ages. Who knows? So the eagle beak broke off and it kept on broken off because this bark that we get here um, in, by Boston Bar, it's really shaly. You guys can see it in the nose there. 
see kind of kind of like cottonwood bark but it's fun to carve super super dusty um, I suggest if anybody's going to get into uh, carving stone, get yourself a good setup. And like the water probably does keep the dust out of the air the best. You can see I just kind of did an old school car carving fusion eagle head on there. Just carved it in quick because I just kept on losing depth from the nose breaking off. I'm glad this nose for the wood spirit didn't break off actually. So let's give you guys a close up of this um, soapstone. Just gave him some hollow eyes in there. The right one looks like he's got a pupil in there, doesn't it? But anyways. I'm not uh, focusing on this. He's got a little bottom lip in there. Good enough. So, what do we do now? You guys want to see the color pop? So, this would be like um, kind of what's iron in the wood. So, it's kind of like uh, not the wood in the soapstone where we got it from. So this probably would be um, like a rust co color inside here. And you're going to see it in a second. So let's do the, the rock one first here. So this is how you do a water test to see the colors. There's different ways to seal this stuff. You can use like um, beeswax and whatever you want to use. I don't know what that spot is in there. I don't know if it's part of the rock. I think it looks like a bit of cement right there or something. Um you can use beeswax and um, friggin' oil. You can, well, I don't suggest oiling it because this isn't porous, so the oil doesn't suck in. Or you could be like me. You could just get uh, clear coat and clear coat it. That's that's a lazy man's way. Hold on a second. So yeah, I'll just use this stuff once that's um, once that's clear, once it's dry again. I'll do it tomorrow. Also, this piece here, I'll um. Get a nice piece of driftwood to sit it on. So it will have like a base. I'll show you a close up of this one so you can see there it is. The prehistoric wood grain. This piece of rock's heavier than that whole piece of soapstone. It's just too hard. And I ran out of patience. And it was too big. Like, I should have carved the, the limestone. Neat colors in there, isn't it? So that's something for you to keep in mind if you guys have a... Uh, I think this stone was maybe used for something. That's not a prehistoric bug hole, but it might have been drilled out. So it was like a... Just like a, a stand. You know, let's see. I think so, because it looks pretty center of the piece. So it was like maybe sitting on something. Just like, here's a piece of prehistoric tree. It's Western red cedar. Who knows what kind of tree it was. Maybe they're not around. They're probably not even around anymore, this type of tree. So, let's give the soapstone watercolor, water test. And look at these colors pop. Oh, look at the colors in there. Iron. Look at the colors in there. Oh yes, this is a nice piece. I got like another 50 pieces of this stuff downstairs. But you know, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So, carving soapstone is super fun. I don't really carving like carving much other stone than that. Because, well, there's other soft, soft stone. I can't think of it right now. I'm pretty tired. But that's it, everybody. Hope you're all good. Maybe one day I'll find a nice base for this at the uh, beach and we'll do something else with this. Put it on a base, drill some holes in the bottom, put some uh, ready rod in it or something. I love the colors in this piece. Let's do a super close-up. And like I said on my beachcombing video, most rock carvers just carve shapes of thing like a like a seal or an Eskimo in a canoe or something. They don't carve, well, I don't know, whatever. That's it for this one. And here's some carving fusion uh, camera skills coming up here.
right now. Hope you're all good and um, might be a little bit before. Oh, yeah, I got a couple of videos stashed away. Talking too much. See you later. Car Infusion. Over and out.